Hey, Lethal listeners, Tig Torres here. Stay tuned for the next episode of Lethal Lit. But first, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Hello? Tig? Yes? I hope it's not too late. Jane Ferranti, producer of Something in the Water. She's an amazing journalist and kind of a legend. Oh, uh, hi, Jane. No, definitely not too late. Always have time for you. I just got off the phone with a medical examiner who will do anything for homemade brownies, even if they're not actually homemade. Have a minute to talk? Of course. The sudden death of the antique store owner, Stephanie Reed, had me convinced something was again not right in the town of Hollow Falls. But the doctor insisted it was a natural death and wouldn't give me the time of day. Jane did, though. Tig, your hunch was right. They found strychnine, otherwise known as... Rat poison. And listen to this. After reviewing the details, they decided to go back and do another autopsy on Brock Montague. Want to guess what they found? Ah, strychnine. Looks like you've got a serial killer on your hands. I shouldn't have felt proud to hear her say that. But I did. And in a sick, twisted way, I also felt excited that there was a new mystery to solve. I guess that's what life in Hollow Falls will do to you. I'm Tig Torres, and this is Lethal Lit. Two victims, each with a music box nearby. I had the means, strychnine. And I had a lead suspect, Harris. But that's where things get complicated. Max was involved with him, had genuine feelings for him. And I didn't handle that well. I couldn't help it. I got that feeling, the feeling I had when the lit killer murders were happening. That it was only a matter of time until another body dropped. Hmm, I needed to apologize to Max, but also protect Max, which, if I was right, was more important than his feelings. Wynne came along to make sure I didn't make things worse. Welcome to the Montague Hotel. Hi, Max. Hey, Max. Max? That's not a latte in your hand while you're greeting guests, is it? Uh, No, sir. It's a cup of water to melt you with, you witch. And how may I help you? Max, I wanted to apologize for coming off so intense yesterday. I'm sorry. I was really short-sighted. And I let my ambition to find out more about Harris override your feelings for Mm him. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And? But I still think we need to talk about him. Hmm. I see. Do you have a reservation with us? Max, Tig and Ella did overhear some pretty shady stuff at that antique store. And he hasn't come forward to the police about being the last person to see Stephanie alive. But last besides Tig and Ella, you mean. I'm sorry, ladies. I don't seem to have a record of you in my system. I'm sure you're not both here to discuss personal matters, as that would get me in trouble with the ogre currently observing security cameras in the office directly behind me. Perhaps you made a reservation under a different name. Max, as painful as this is, we have to talk about it. It's really important. Uh, One moment, and I'll check on that for you. You don't like Harris, and you don't approve of my being in a relationship with him. He's a suspect! Why? How? He was badgering Brock moments before he died. Plus, the stuff we overheard at the antique store. The music boxes, and then Stephanie? There's no proof there's even been a murder. Brock Montague had a heart attack, and the antique lady had a seizure. No, Max. They were both poisoned. The coroner confirmed it half an hour ago. Now, have you seen anything suspicious? You know, I've been too busy sipping on the latte that my beautiful, thoughtful boyfriend bought me, and I guess I forgot to indulge in any wild conspiracy theories this morning. Hmm. You've got to listen to me. Someone else could die, Max. Excuse me? I've listened. I'm not convinced. Now let me do my job. Yes? I have a delivery here for Max Weinman. That's me. Have a nice day. Max? That's not a 
personal package, is it? Uh, no, Walter. It's, uh, it's a guest ledger I ordered to surprise you. Oh, it's from Harris. <laughs> Less than a full month into a relationship and he can't keep himself from sending me surprises. Oh. Well, that's... Nice. Max, put that latte down! Is that... <laughs> Tig! What's going on out there, uh, Nothing, just an accident. Cleaning it up now. We have to get you to the hospital right now. Wh what the hell is wrong with you? There's rat poison in that latte! I know why people don't get their stomachs pumped for fun. How are you feeling, Max? <clears throat> like Andy Cohen after taping a Housewives reunion. Badgered, exhausted, wondering why the hell I'm alive. The doctor says you're all right. Wonderful. Well, I hope you got everything you wanted from this delightful experience, Tig. Let's do it again sometime. You're not safe here, Max. We're going to take you home. You're being crazy, Tig. Brock and Stephanie both died within minutes of getting a music box. If Harris, or whoever it is, is coming after you, then there's a good chance he'll try and make another move tonight. Shouldn't we call the police, then? And tell them what? Well, you can explain your little theory. Or does that mean having to tell them the truth about your antique store B&E? We're going to stay with you tonight, Max. I'm sorry. I refuse to believe that Harris would try to hurt me. It just it doesn't make sense. He's our only serious lead right now. Harris and Ollie. Well, yeah, but why would Ollie want to kill Max? Um, maybe because we stopped him from fulfilling his murder dreams of killing you? Why would either of them? What the hell did I do? I don't know, but we're not leaving your side. No one's getting anywhere near you. <sighs> Story of my life. I was acting a lot more certain than I really was. The truth is, it didn't all make sense to me. Max had a good point. Why would Harris want him dead? And why put his return address on the music box package? And what possible connection could there be between Brock Montague, Stephanie, and Max? A millionaire playboy, an antique store owner, and the high school junior currently leading the voting for most organized locker. Still, there was what I overheard at the antique store. Was I paranoid? At the time, I reasoned to myself that it's safer to be paranoid when a friend's life is in the balance. Oh, well, isn't this great? A prisoner in my own home, forced to eat clam chowder straight out of the can. Ugh. Can't we at least order from the star? No, we can't risk anyone touching your food. Not even Phil? Ugh, so what's the plan exactly? Well, we stay here with you until you're out of danger. Which will be until... That's reassuring. Um, the three of us can sleep in shifts. That way someone's always on the lookout. Makes sense. I think the first thing to do is... Shh. Now, who do you think that might be? Hey, Lethal listeners. Stay tuned. More Lethal Lit is up next. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Hey, Lethal listeners. Tig Torres here. There's always more to the mystery, and I could use your help getting to the bottom of it. Join us on Instagram and TikTok at I am Tig Torres for more clues and inside info. Max, do you have a baseball bat? Do I look like I'd have a baseball bat? What about a kitchen knife? In the kitchen, Sherlock. We're armed in here and extremely dangerous! We called 911. The police are on their way. Come on, open up in there. Elle? Ugh, you almost gave me a heart attack. Are you seriously doing an all-night vigil without me? Weren't you grounded after getting dropped off by a squad car last night? 
I can't believe you asked them to chauffeur you home. And literally use the word chauffeur. I can't believe you stayed at the hospital. What'd you do? Walk home? Really? Anyway, I got a 20-minute lecture on political optics and a new bag for keeping it out of the papers. So we're going to continue keeping it out of the papers. Right? I really want that bag. And how did you know we were here? Tig added me to the group chat. Oh, really? Big step. Well then, welcome to the party. It feels like a funeral in here. Don't you guys know how to do a sleepover? (laughs) Sure. Yeah. So cute. All right. Never have I ever kissed a girl. Who? 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 All right, all right, all right, calm down. It was fifth freaking grade with this random girl, Kelsey. I was hoping I'd absorb her abilities with men without also absorbing her red hair gene. (laughs) Can you imagine me as a ginger? When? I kissed Annie, of course. And then there was this girl at camp. (gasps) Oh my god, Annie. Uh, And I haven't thought about that psycho in forever. Okay, she's not a psycho. I I still follow her on the gram. She's got a pug, and she makes little hats for it. Who's Annie? Wynn's first official girlfriend. She goes to Fremen Prep now. Wait, didn't you bring her to the end of the year formal? (gasps) That's right. She was hitting on Katie Briggs, our head cheerleader. Something pretty fierce. And that was one of your healthier relationships. Really? Who else were you with? Okay, enough attention on Wynn. We're still playing a game, are we not? Okay, let's see. Never have I ever developed real feelings for an actual psycho. Like a potential serial killer, for example. Harris is not a psycho. Who said I was talking about you? I bet psycho killers make very passionate lovers. You know what? Can we not talk about psycho killers for, like, one glorious evening? Please? I'm serious. You're right. (sighs) My bad. Look. None of you know Harris, okay? It's not like I'm so unbelievably desperate for affection that I'd look past murder. That's not what I said. Sure feels like it. Believe me, Max, everyone here knows I'm in no position to judge you, but even assuming he's innocent, Harris still gives off shady vibes. Can I ask, what do you see in him? I really want to know. Yeah, I'm kind of curious too. Well, I, <laughs> he's Gorge, for one. He knows what he wants, and he's not afraid to go for it. He's not like other people in this town, just letting themselves be dragged whichever way life happens to take them. He's got plans. He makes me feel like I can be whatever I want to be. And unlike most of the superficial idiots on Grinder, he actually thinks these scars on my face are... Kinda hot. Oh, who am I kidding? I want attention so badly, I'll look past anything. Now it turns out he's a murdering psychopath. Of course he is. Isn't that just exactly who I'd fall for? I can't believe I was so stupid to think that what we had was real. Hey, don't say that. You're not stupid. And maybe it is real. There's no denying the music box and the drinks. And I I felt so special when he brought me that latte, but then it was a a death latte. I think both things can be true. A person can have real feelings for you, and they can also want to hurt you. Who are we talking about, Tig? Maybe it's just a side of himself he can't control. Maybe it's how he was raised. Everyone has control over the choices they make. You deserve better, Max. I'm just saying it happens. Don't hate on yourself, Max. Did you know I never cried when Tony was killed? (laughs) Isn't that crazy? It wasn't until after. I was at the mall trying out new eyeliner, treating myself, I just started bawling, and I couldn't stop for three days. 
Oh, Ella. Honey, come here. Tig, you okay? I miss Ollie. I still think about him. A lot. We all do, Tig. Look, even though it turns out we didn't know him like we thought we did, Ollie was a friend for a long time. Some of it had to be real. Hmm, I don't know. I have to tell you all something. What is it, Tig? I... I'm really glad you're all my friends. Aww. Come here, you guys. Group hug. Aw, look at us. Ow! Ella, your nails! My bad. You know, I'm glad my dad moved me to Hollow Falls. Even though Denise, my spiritual advisor, says the whole town is haunted. You don't believe in ghosts now, do you? No. But as Denise told you, you can be haunted by grief. You can't deny that. That's true. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if there was something we could do about that? Like, some kind of exorcism or something? So we could all just get on with our lives? I can't wait to get the hell out of this place. It just eats people alive and makes a Michelin star meal out of their dreams. <laughs> F that. All right, I'm walking off that stage at graduation and right out of town. You watch. We know you will, Max. Yeah, if anyone can, it's you. God, what time is it? Almost two. You tired? You kidding? The night is still young, queen. When I will tell you what, yeah, I have to stay next to Walter's Hmm. Looks like they're both out. Ella sleeps like she's posing for a selfie. <laughs> uh, you can rest your eyes if you want. I can keep watch. No, no, I mean, unless you'd rather be alone. If, if you're uncomfortable spending the night together with me, oh, well, I don't know. Would Annie be jealous? <laughs> Annie is with a guy now. Right. Also, she wasn't the jealous type. Far from it. Truth be told, she wasn't that into me. Good kisser, though. Oh, yeah? Like how? Well, it's hard to put into words. You're not waiting for me to lean in and kiss you, are you? No. You're not waiting for me to lean in and kiss you, are you? Uh, of course not. Okay. Then we're on the same page then. Yeah. I mean, this would be a pretty romantic time for a kiss though, wouldn't it? Seems like it. What was that? Oh, crap. Max, wake up! Someone's at the door! Mm, what? What's happening? I is it your parents? N no, they're away till the end of the week. Yeah. Uh, uh, grab the skillet! Ella, there are scissors on the counter. Uh, win the, the kitchen knife! Max. Oh, Maxie. Harris! Don't come any closer. I am fully prepared to use these scissors. <laughs> What are you gonna do, give me bangs? What's going on in here, Max? Wait, did I walk in on a sleepover? Uh, it's so cozy in here. We're not gonna let you hurt Max. Hurt Max? How did you get in? Did you steal a key to Max's house and make a duplicate? <laughs> what are you talking about? Are, are you on drugs? Uh, look, he gave me the key, okay? Oh my god, I did. You what? What were you thinking? I gave him a copy while my parents are away. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Okay, seriously? What's going on here? They know about us. I told them. You can't say anything about this. My father would kill me. Dude. Please, he, he disinf- dis, discombub- dis, disinherit me! Just, what do you want? Max got your little music box. Oh, I, I see, and, and you went in, right? <laughs> about time. We want in? To what? To killing him? Why do you want Max dead? Want him dead? What are you talking about? It, it was a present, the first of its kind. And I have even more ideas of products for the Hollow Falls Murder Lovers gift shop. <laughs> oh 
murder lovers. I should be selling couples packages. What? I'm still working on the title. I want it to be in the Montague just off the lobby. I got keychains, mugs, I visited Hollow Falls and lived to tell about it t-shirts. I've got the floor plan all mapped out, but then Brock was, well, you know, so the project's on pause for a while. Ugh, that Walter is next to impossible to work with. He's downright evil. See? I told you guys. So that's why you were at the antique store? Yeah. Stephanie's in touch with a vendor overseas who was, like, so cheap, I, I don't even want to know how much they pay their workers. She gets a lot of her work done that way. Some of her antiques aren't so antique but shh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a secret. Harris, didn't you hear? Stephanie's dead, dude. What? Right after you were in her store last night. Strychnine poisoning. Oh god. No, 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 no. This this is terrible. How am I going to find another vendor? Vendor? I guess I could do license plate frames, but no, those those music boxes were going to launch my mail order business. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Is this guy serious right now? I'm sorry. You, you're right. I just... I meant to say it's very sad, I guess. W wait, how'd you know I was in her store last night? Um, we had a, uh, wait a minute. What are you doing sneaking in here at this time of night? Tig, really? You're a detective. I, I think you can figure this one out. Uh, look like I was wrong about Harris being the killer. He was just an overzealous entrepreneur with questionable moral bearings. And for better or for worse, Max's boyfriend. Hey, Max. Tig. Wild night, huh? Certainly memorable. It's not often you can say that getting your stomach pumped is the least weird part of your day. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Look, I... I know you were just looking out for me, albeit in a completely deranged way. I just wish you would take me a little more seriously sometimes and trust me when I tell you stuff. You're right. <sighs> well, it looks like you're back to square one. What'll you do now? What would I do now? Well, I did what any hypocrite who just finished criticizing her friend's poor relationship choices would do. I called Ollie. Strychnine? That's interesting. Why is that interesting? Well, that's how Agatha Christie would kill people off in her stories. Could be a nod to the lit killer. Harry Levinson, the original lit killer. Ollie had given me an idea. Maybe the music box wasn't the key clue. Maybe it was the strychnine. If the killer was using strychnine as a literary reference, he might be connected somehow to Levinson. It was a stretch, but it was something to go on, which meant there was someone I had to talk to. You're gonna go talk to Levinson? Are you nuts? Promise me you won't go see him. He's stronger than you think he can get in your head. If he has something to do with this, then you visiting him in prison is already a part of his plan. Don't you get it? He wants to be in your head too. Promise me you won't put yourself in harm's way like that. Promise you won't go to the prison. Okay, Ollie. I promise. How bad could one little white lie be? Einhorn's Epic Productions and iHeartRadio present Lethal Lit, A Tig Torres Mystery, Season 2. Created and executive produced by Heather Einhorn and Adam Staffaroni. Created by Alex Segura and Monica Gallagher. Executive produced by iHeartRadio. Head writer, Melanie Hoops. Writers, Louis Kornfeld, Jasmine Alshami, and Adam Staffaroni. Directed by Kritzia Bajos, with performances by Rebecca Soler as Tig Torres, Shelley Shinoy as Wynn, Matt Gumley as Max, Luke Slattery as Ollie, Rachel Oramland as Ella, with Kritzia Bajos and J.B. Blanc. Special guest Chuck Bryant as Brock Montague. Additional voices, Paul Guyot, Caleb Yen, Stacey Mosley, Alba Ponce de Leon, Stephanie Shea, Christian Ochoa, Louis Kornfeld, and Megan Gray. 
Post sound and music by Chapter 4. Sound supervision and sound design by Sarah Gibalaska. Music by Kareem Duady. Produced by Arup Sanakaila and Bo Youngblood. Development executive, Greg Lockhart. Production coordinator and script supervisor, Laura Martin. Operations, Laura Kaufman. Marketing and publicity, Jesse Post. Digital marketing, Jennifer Gennaro. Creative direction and design by Ryan McCann. Key art illustrated by Rebecca Mock. Promotional art illustrated by Brie Newman. Special thank you to The Shadow Unicorn. Head to lethallitpodcast.com to share theories, discover new evidence, and follow case updates. Einhorn's Epic Productions and iHeartRadio present Lethal Lit, a Tig Torres Mystery.